what mm. really attracted you to your husband? Being a church person, being someone who is spiritually upright, that was a plus for me. Mm -hmm. I knew I would, I would not just go into marriage to try. I yes. want my marriage to work. So I want somebody who who is serious with life, someone who is hard working. So, you know, I think he met all my parameters. Mm -hmm. Get married to somebody who loves you, not somebody that you think you really love. Because if you are the one who is loving and is not loving you back, it means that marriage can collapse anytime. So you must make sure before you make a decision to get married, you must make sure that the man loves you even more than you love him. Because it means um, the, the, the probability of that marriage lasting are higher than when you love somebody more than he mm. loves you. Really? <laughs> yes. Where do we draw the line between submissiveness and mm. slavery? Oh, well, you have to make a decision. Because uh, sometimes you can feel like you are, you know, you, you, you are being used up or something. Uh, but one, you have to apply one, humility. And one, you have to decide whether you want your marriage to work. Because that feeling will not last long. I believed that God will make me great. But I must be careful to be humble. To be the ones who introduced pottery farming in Katundu North. Wow. And in most parts of Kiambu County. So you just mentioned the name Kirika and we are known for for pottery farming. Mm -hmm. And I think before COVID-19, we were still running one of the largest pottery farms in Kenya. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Restoration Series. My name is Lynn Googie. Now, honestly, I feel happy getting to host my guest today when I interviewed her sister a couple of months back and then she mentioned something like, Lynn, you know what? My sister has really, really worked hard. Even now, she's the deputy governor of Kiambu. It's not the deputy part or the politics part that really caught my attention. For me, I was like, if Josephine has gone through this and her sister has also gone through this, how did they get to where they are today? So when I asked her, could I please interview your sister? She said, Lynn, don't worry, I'll put a good word for you. And then later on, I have her sister here on the show who is going to inspire us. And I keep saying sometimes there are a lot of people I'm bringing you on the show. And for me, I'm learning one thing. You are not what people say you are. And you have to be very careful with the words that has spoken unto you. You have to be able to listen to yourself and know who really am I? Because people are going to say so many things out there. They are going to define you. They are going to act like they know you, but they don't know you. They don't know what you've been through and they do not know how you got where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep saying, even on this platform, I'm grateful to the giver of this gift and not the gift itself. I know I can pull up and host a show. I know I can give you guys inspirational shows, zikue low vibrations, zikue whichever, but I keep saying I'm really grateful and loyal to the giver of this gift and not the gift itself. So when I find people who I know their journey has been similar to mine and they refused to give up, that really inspires me. So I'm about to let my guest introduce herself today. And I hope by the end of today's conversation, you are inspired to chase your dream, whether it's spiritually, economically, emotionally, politic political wise, don't let anyone put a bump into the life that God has said he's going to give you. So I hope you get inspired. And of course, to say thank you so much to you guys for watching and subscribing. Did I hear Sprinkle, sprinkle, a million subscribers. Like, hey! <laughs> Queen. Guys, please subscribe if you haven't. It's going to help us and of course to the amazing team that puts this work together. Thank you so much. I don't take your efforts for granted. And now without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Mom, good morning. Good morning, Lynn. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. How are you feeling? I'm uh, feeling good. Mm -hmm. 
in fact it is very exciting that you can let us have this conversation yeah thank you so much yes yeah. i appreciate you coming Asante. i appreciate you honoring the invite to be interviewed <laughs> by me yeah I, I i i really connected with your sister and wow. her story yes. and i knew words unspoken i would connect yes. with you the same way so i appreciate you coming through but before we go any further maybe yeah. you can introduce yourself to my people thank you yes. uh, so this is rosemary mm -hmm. kirika Born again Christian, uh, in fact a lay reader in the Anglican Church of yeah. Kenya, yeah. Thika Diocese, currently the Deputy Governor, Kiambu County, yeah. uh, previously the CEO and Director of Chania Feeds mm -hmm. Manufacturers Limited in yeah. Thika, yeah. and also Director of Kirika Poultry Farm Limited in Gatundo North. I am a mother of many yes. <laughs> and a wife. To a Mr. James Kirikanjaroge. Oh yeah. Yeah. How is life, ma'am? Ah, uh, I can generally say life is good because life is here to be enjoyed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> life is here to be enjoyed. Yes. Yes. Yeah, life is good. Mm -hmm. mm. At ACC, we are good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I can see you're so warm. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Me, I'm so I'm so excited, son of Kiria. Ah, no, no, I'm I'm rethinking my career choices, uh, but anyways, God is good. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Also, mm -hmm. uh, as I said earlier, for yeah. even honoring the invite to come here on mm. the show, yeah. I I don't get to interview people of your caliber <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more yeah. often. But who is God? God, I, God I feel honored. Is, yeah. Yes. God is amazing. He good. Asante. Karibu. Now in this show yes. we have a couple of things that we start with. Yeah. Now they say Dlin, we are not only rebuilding in twenty twenty four, we are restoring. It's okay. the year of rebuilding and the year of restoration. restoration. Which one are you doing between the two? Uh rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Restoration. Okay. I think I would choose restoration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Uh, restoration. Uh, because at some point uh, you may have things that have been taken away from you and you want them to be restored. For example, uh, during COVID-19, uh, people lost property, people lost jobs, people lost so many things. So it comes a time when now we start telling God, I need restoration. Yes. And he's, taught, he's restoring. And he's restoring. Mm. Yes. The years that the locust <laughs> is. Yes, he's okay. restoring. Mm -hmm. Because I've also gone through a lot in life. Mm. And God has been restoring over the years. For example, in, uh, in 2019, I lost my daughter. Oh. Yeah. And you see, I went through that process. Sorry. And now it came a time that God, I had to cry to God to restore my life, to allow me to live a normal life again. Yeah. So that is restoration. Amen. Mm. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you. May her soul rest mm. uh, with the angels. Uh. Yes. Oh, really? It's yeah. the year of restoration. Sure, sure. I'm feeling it. Uh. Yes. Yeah, mom, this is the part where I talk less. Uh -huh. and let you walk us through your journey yeah thank you because you don't just wake up one day and you are ceo of this company mm -hmm. and you are the deputy governor of this county yes. you don't just wake <laughs> up and those things happen to yeah. you yeah there has to be a process a there process. must have been a footprints you know mm, that formed true. your journey mm. so from an area you are comfortable in mm -hmm. could you take us through your story yes. so that we understand how was life like for you growing up mm -hmm. the challenges you faced the mm -hmm. breakthroughs and how we got to where we yeah. are right now ah, thank you Lynn. yeah so i was born in a village called garaka Garaka is a village uh, in Gitwamba Ward, Gato mm -hmm. North sub county of uh, Kiambu County. Yes. Uh, my father was a teacher. In fact, he was a deputy, a deputy uh, head teacher of a primary school called mm -hmm. Kiriko Primary. Mm -hmm. My mother was a housewife. Yeah. Uh, and then, as life or less fit me have it. My dad passed on when I was only in class one. And you can imagine what that meant to us as a family. I was the second born 
well in a family of nine children but the first girl in the family mm -hmm. now when my father died and he was a teacher that was such a great disruption of our life before he died we used to feed well we used to dress well we used to live well uh, in fact we used to get uh, food items from a certain shop on credit and then the teacher would clear the bill at the end of the month. Mm. <laughs> so you'd get rice, wheat flour, bread, you know, everything that we needed for the house. Yes. But now, all of a sudden, he's gone. My mother is a housewife. Now life changes like almost immediately. It impacted so negatively on what we ate, how we dressed, how we lived. Yeah, in fact, we started eating what I would call in Kikuyu, Mairio. Oh. <laughs> Mairio because if it was porridge, it is porridge without sugar. If it is tea, it is tea without milk. And when it has milk, it has no sugar. When it is githeri, it is githeri without beans. <laughs> so you see, yeah. it was such a, a drastic change for <coughs> us. Uh, but now you might ask yourself, how, how did we survive? Mm -hmm. So when I was in around class four, class five, we'd go and work in people's farms, and then we'd be compensated with food items, raw food like uh, sweet potatoes or even maize. And then myself, I was so good in, in picking tea. Our area was uh, a tea zone. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was so good in picking tea. I would go to people's farms. I pick tea. I am paid. Then I use that money to buy myself uniform. Yes. I would also go to people's coffee farms. And I would collect the berries that have fallen. I am paid. And then I would use th that money to buy thread mm -hmm. to make myself sweaters. <laughs> So that was the kind of, <laughs> of life we lived, and uh, God is so good. Then my mom, my mom uh, was such an encourager. Mm -hmm. One, she loved education. You know what she used to do? She used to go to my, my father's grave every morning, and she would go and pray that God, this man lying in this grave, has gone with so much knowledge. I'd like you to take that knowledge and pour a little to each of my children. Oh, that was my mother's prayer. So while as we'd go there to play games on the grave, because oh. you know the, the grave had a gravestone, yes. you know, so it was, it had a slab. Mm -hmm. So as, as kids, <laughs> we'd just, <laughs> we'd go there and play yeah. games. But my mom had a different agenda. And I think God is so gracious because she managed to convince us that it is good to have an education. So I made up my mind at a very early age that I was going to work hard in school yeah. and I'm going to change <coughs> my life. Mm -hmm. So I worked hard in school. One of the uh, most impacting outcomes of my dad's death is that we became nomads. Yeah, This is uh, where one would move from one place to another looking for greener pastures. So we found ourselves living in different places just looking for greener pastures. Mm. You see, I was born in Garaka. Yes. Then we moved from Garaka to Chania village. Then we moved to Getuamba. We moved to Matara. Uh, and then finally we found ourselves in Nyandaro. Mm. And it's not only that we lived in different places. We also changed churches because we were Catholics initially. Then we became Pentecostal. Then we became Anglican, <laughs> you see? Yeah. And then what this also meant, that I also changed schools. So in primary school, I attended three different primary schools. I went to Kiriko, then I went to Kamwangi, mm. then I went to Mudurumbi uh, in Gatondo. So you can see yeah. proper <clears throat> nomads, just the, an outcome of a dad's death. Uh, but God is so gracious. After, after going through my primary education, when I did my exams, 
I imagined the best in that zone. Wow. And people are so shocked. Yeah. One of the other things I had decided to do when I was very young is that I was not going to get myself involved with boys. <laughs> I was so I was so careful with boys. Uh -huh. I didn't want to get an early pregnancy or anything that would disrupt my education. So ukikatwa okay, uliko unafanya? Father, ukikatiwa okay, <laughs> when they were hitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, when boys was, would would like hey, uh, what, what would you, you do? You know what we had we were, we were so conscious. So mm. we had come from the like, team of girls in <laughs> our village. Yes. And uh, when we strolled around uh, on Sundays, uh -huh. we used to carry some crude weapons like sticks which were sharp we strolled around on Sundays mm. we were we were promising ourselves if a boy or a man would talk to us we are going to <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it was that serious it was that serious you see you were conscious yeah but we never we never attacked anyone <laughs> uh -huh. plus what would even a stick do to someone <laughs> yeah that was just our way yeah. i think of being conscious mm -hmm. yeah so uh I, i i concluded my primary school education i performed very well and joined mary hill high school wow. yeah okay yeah so uh, again i went through high school i performed well in form 4 with a division 1 proceeded to baringo high school for my a levels i performed well again in a level i was doing what they, we used to call mbc mathematics biology chemistry so yes. i was a science student then after that i joined uh, kenyatta university mm -hmm. when i did uh, bachelor of science in botany and zoology oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, and then you, now mm -hmm. it's only after many years of doing business when I again had an urge uh, of going back to school and uh, to do my master's degree mm. just to improve my management skills. Wow. Yes. You are doing every you are conquering. <laughs> uh -huh. You are conquering. Yeah. But at at this particular moment when mom is struggling with you guys, mm -hmm. where is mm -hmm. the school fees to take you to Mary Hills, to Baringo, to KU? Mm -hmm. How is she doing financially? How was she able to cope? Well, she was um, she, she was uh, doing jobs mm -hmm. in farms mm -hmm. and uh, and getting wages. And at the same time we had a, a small tea farm yeah. so that came in handy but uh, what i can clearly remember when i joined form one uh, my mom used all the money she had and uh, by the time she was leaving me in school in form one she left me only 10 shillings for pocket money so i didn't know what to do with 10 shillings so i just kept it in my bag and uh, by the time she came back for visiting i still had my 10 shillings <laughs> So I just used to watch people eating mandazis and but when they were doing that I was busy with my books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, high school was not really expensive because I can remember uh, every first semester we used to pay something which was less than 20 20,000 shillings. Second semester we used to pay only 850 shillings. That semester we used to pay only 150 shillings. Wow. You see it was not very difficult. Yes. But again, another another miracle happened. By the time I was around from three around there, uh, mom <laughs> got married again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that really, I think that uh, that really helped, especially mm -hmm. with school fees. Mm -hmm. So that is how we survived. Okay. Mm -hmm. How was it to having survived with mom and then seeing mm -hmm. a new man, you know, come into <laughs> her life? Mama meenda, ametoka soko. Sasa, mama mepata mtu. Mama mepata mtu. Yeah, they just came with him uh, one visiting day. We used to be visited <laughs> once uh, once every month yeah. uh, in high school. Uh -huh. So this particular time, uh, she comes with uh, with a man and uh, introduces him as uh, as her husband. Then my reaction was, oh, well, I don't mind because you, you remember I was a Catholic. Yes. Uh, I said uh, our our religion allows someone to remarry if they lose their husbands and uh, that one i had learned so mm -hmm. i had no issue mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah mm. uh -huh. so we started living with this man and uh, yeah how was it ah uh, well challenging because he had <laughs> he had another family yes so you can imagine as uh, uh, your dad is bringing a wife who has nine children he took all of you yes he took all of us 
Now I don't know how he made such a decision. He loved uh, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm. so that was the experience. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was not very easy to to blend with that other family, but by and by, we survived. Plus, we were not living at the same place. We only lived together for a short time. Then, uh, we had already moved to the Rift Valley, yes. and then they were here in Kikuyu land. So. Mm -hmm. That was okay. That was okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. And now you've you've maneuvered life. You find mm -hmm. yourself at Kenyatta University. Yes. And now you are doing botan <laughs> botany, <laughs> bachelor of science in botany and zoology. Okay. You see, it simply means um, plants and animals. Okay. Yeah. Why that in particular? Because I was a scientist. Eh? You see, that is like uh, biology and chemistry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I dropped mathematics after A levels, so I call it's like I concentrated with biology mm -hmm. and chemistry. And uh, probably what I've not told you, when I was in high school, I was, I was very active. And uh, I was a class, uh, an assistant class prefect. Mm -hmm. I was in games. Yes. I used to play volleyball. In fact, I have so many certificates mm -hmm. for volleyball. Then when I was in A level, I was a games, uh, an assistant games captain. Then I, I became a games captain. I was active. And then you see, I was also a soloist in the church choir uh -huh. at, the, at, at Mary Hill. Yes. I was the soloist. And they used to know when I'm not around yeah. because my voice was like, you know. So mom can <laughs> sing. You can you can sing. I can. Well, yeah, I, I can. I can sing. In mm -hmm. fact, at some point in life, I thought I would become a musician. So it be a I used, no, 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 no. Uh, no mom. <laughs> And I used to think, <laughs> but probably I would like to be married by someone who sings so that we can continue singing. But I would like to give you the background about that singing. Yes. Uh, you, you see, when we were growing up, my mom could not afford paraffin. So after taking lunch, she would take potatoes and start peeling them for supper. So by 6 p.m., we are already fed. We, are, uh, we have taken our supper. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, when the darkness comes, she expects us to go to bed, but we are not tired. We are not ready to sleep. Yes. So what we used to do, uh, all of us, well, we'd just uh, be around the fire and we start singing in darkness. <laughs> so every night we would sing and sing and sing. Mm -hmm. And I think that is how we gained that voice. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> bless us with a verse. Sing for us a little. You, you want me to sing? Yes. Ah, <coughs> which, which song do I sing? I can sing a Kikuyu song. Yes, feel free. I can sing uh, this one for, I don't know the singer, but it says, Digiri ganiru kushoka Wadiri kanire kugani wega Imaniri wangai Nyudiri kanete Dikioli dasoka kugani wega Good? Good. Yes, yeah. it's good. It's good. <laughs> <Is that> it? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy singing. Mm. So in fact, every morning when I'm doing my devotion, I start by singing. Mm -hmm. So I sing, I sing, I sing. Then I get into prayers. I okay. read the Bible. Mm. Yeah, we'll come to the spiritual aspect. <laughs> yeah. I'm sensing you are very grounded in your faith. Mm -hmm. You are very spiritual. Mm -hmm. But back to KU when uh -huh. you are studying, how was life like there? Well, I can say life was, 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 was good. You see, there was a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd given my life to Christ when I was in the A level. Uh, so, Sikwana Maneno Mengi. Yeah, it was, it was just books, books, books. We didn't enjoy a lot of things. In fact, we came to discover later that there were, there were, there were games and even something like a swimming pool, which we did not get to enjoy. Uh, people used to go out every weekend. We never used to enjoy all that. As there is a clique of ladies where we just, we just concentrated with our books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you succeeded. Yes, he succeeded. You did not feel the pressure of being in university, a young girl looking super hot and wanting to combine books and other activities. Oh, yes, yeah, a, li a little bit here and there. Yes. But <laughs> nothing worth mentioning. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it was just a smooth university life. So how did you cope? Uh, it was it was not difficult because remember, Lynn, at that time we used to have what we called boom. Yeah, we used to get something like 5,000 mm -hmm. every semester, at the beginning of every semester. 
and uh, with that we would combine effort with friends and buy music systems mm. yeah so uh, if each and every one of us had a music system yeah. which really kept us busy yeah so it was not difficult to go through the university okay yeah boom in nini where are you getting the money <laughs> the money from the government do you, they do that anymore i don't think so but so, uh, during our time you were mm, given allowance yeah an allowance at every at the beginning of every semester we would go to the bank and get 5000 if you are a student in a public university you didn't know that hey, no <laughs> 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 yeah, I used to get a book. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. Yes, yes. Oh, I hope they'd still do that cuz it would help I, a I, lot. I I wish they would. It really used to help us because most of us never used to get anything from the parents. We used to survive on the boom. Mm. Yeah. I hope they do that. Uh, But yeah, anyways, yeah. continue. <laughs> yes. yes. So now immediately after university. That's when I got married. Uh in fact the negotiations were going on before I completed So immediately after university I got married um, and <laughs> mama patu <laughs> arakishangi your story acha <laughs> come back come back uh-huh. this is the part we love yes. so in KU someone had already started uh looking at you like oh, oh, oh yeah eh, take mm-hmm. us there oh yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to be taken there yes. <laughs> wow what I can see lean about that mm. I think it was um it was um a divine or a spiritual journey for me yeah because yeah he, he started seeing me right yes and then uh, his agenda was one when he was serious he was he was looking for someone to marry <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and then before i made up my mind we went to the lab one of the days yeah. and the lab technician came round mm? he asked me Are you so and so? I said yes. Then he told me, I'd like you to come to my office after this class. I want to pray with you. There is something the Lord is telling me. Ah. I got scared because you see I'm I'm talking with this man. He wants to marry me after school and I'm refusing. And then I had a dream that uh, one one time I was sleeping in the dormitory yeah. and then I saw a bright light and then somebody talked to me in a loud voice it's in a dream he told me you have been called and you are refusing switch off that music system so when now this man again comes around and asking me whether I'm so and so and he wants to meet with me and there is something the lord is saying i got so scared so i thought wow this is what god is talking about he has called me so i i i decided to say yes <laughs> out of that experience i decided to say yes it helped me to make up the decision mm. Yeah. So the lab technician you went he prayed for you? I did not go. Oh. I got scared. Yes. I got scared, <clears throat> but it's like I I knew what he wanted to talk about. Mm. Mm. So the, the this man who was <laughs> hitting on you, were you in university together or what was he doing? Uh we were not in in the university together. Yeah. In fact, he is a man who was a bit more advanced in age than myself. Mm-hmm. Uh I have a blended family yes. that I must disclose because I found him he had another family before mm-hmm. and the wife had unfortunately passed on oh, okay. and uh, he had three children mm-hmm. so I became their mother yeah that is how I started like married life mm. and probably that is why I was being told you have been called and you are refusing because this was a church person he was a leader in the church a pillar in the church and he had lost his wife now people are all listening in his house praying for the person who will come to this home mm-hmm. yeah but i must say that that is now where life started in anesti because i found myself in the midst of so many things uh, i've just graduated from the university all of a sudden i have three children The last one is only four years. All of a sudden, I have a husband, and not just a husband, a very respectable husband. 
you know, one who is a pillar in the village, a prominent person, yeah, all of a sudden, I'm managing a business because him, he was already established mm. with his businesses. Uh, he was a pillar in the church, so I also have to deal with the church, to get into the church and get into the church issues. I also have the community because it's like the community really owned him. We were so concerned about the person who will come to that home. So I also have a community to manage. I also have the larger family. Yes. Yeah. And not forgetting the many visitors that used to come to that home and I had to manage. I had now to manage the home. I had to manage everybody. It was so overwhelming. And how old were you here? <laughs> I was slightly above 25 years, Aww. 25, 26 there. Mm. Yeah. And now I found myself in that kind of a situation. In fact, uh, the daughter, the daughter, now my daughter, mm. would, would joke and say that, Mom, you don't even have a walking style. <laughs> 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 because it was like, <laughs> yeah, kill a valley. But, but I managed, yeah. Then uh, we got into business. I became the CEO of Chania Feeds. Mm. In fact, I'm the one who opened the doors of that company. I'm the one who opened the uh, who opened that company because I'm the one who was available. Mm -hmm. Him, he was busy uh, because I found he was doing a large scale, very large scale poultry farming. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, Lynn, I can tell you that we are the ones who introduced poultry farming in Gatundu North. Wow. And in most parts of Kiambu County. So you just mentioned the name Kirika and we are known for for poultry farming. Mm -hmm. And I think before COVID-19, we were still running one of the largest poultry farms in Kenya. Uh, and uh, the most important thing about that poultry farming is how we introduced other other people into that business and how we how we supported them to start their poultry farm, mm -hmm. how we supported them with the feed on credit, how we provided market for them until they were able now to be independent. Mm -hmm. So we introduced poultry farming to all our neighbors, to many people. We used to receive a lot of guests coming to learn from our farm. Mm. Farm uh, tours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, poultry farming. Mm -hmm. So that had a big impact uh, on the on the community, and now we we found the need to start another company called Chania Chania Feeds mm -hmm. Manufacturers yes. Limited in Thika, yeah. where I started that company myself because I'm the one who was available uh, to manage it. But my husband joined me later after after a short time, like a year or so, because mm. he found well, this is a company which is which is going to grow very fast. Mm -hmm. So he still joined me. And uh, again, I've, I've, uh, I've seen the growth of that company right from the beginning, from when it was a manual company, all the processes were manual, to when we, we, we it became semi-automated, mm. and then when it became fully, fully automated. automated. So uh, this is a company which again supported our, our livestock farmers. We have supported them in training, uh, in field extension services. Um, this is a company that has really impacted on people, mm -hmm. provision of quality animal feeds, and also um, provided employment for our young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, after some time, we started another company called Chania Flour Mills. Yes. I don't know whether you had heard, uh -huh. ever heard about it, mm -hmm. although we ran it only for seven years. But it was another enormous and uh, automated, very modern modern uh, flour mill. Lynn, if you ever came across a flour b uh, brand called Chania Citizen, Chania Star, Chania Harry, uh, those were my brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at that time, I was a member of Sirio Miller's Association. Uh, and as you know, flour milling in this country has always been dominated by the Asian Kenyans. Yes. Yeah, I was a member of Sirio Miller's Association, where I found myself, I was the only woman <laughs> and the only African. And uh, actually, this is a team that prompted me to go back to, to the university to do my master's degree 
because I interacted with them, we had many meetings. And then I just compared myself with them. Yes. The, the way they ran their, their mega businesses, the kind of knowledge they had, their management styles. And I, I discovered that there was a lot that they knew that I did not know. So I was forced to go back to the university and do my master's degree. Uh, so I went to USIU and I did uh, MBA in the strategic management. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I remember when I was still at USIU doing my master's degree, Ms. Fla became a political commodity. It became very scarce and very expensive. That time, the, the current president, William Ruto, was the Minister for Agriculture. Mm. I remember one time we went to meet with him, with the Sirio Millers, uh, and I still remember how he greeted us, yeah? He greeted uh, us like, good morning, gentlemen, <laughs> and <Yeah>. one lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to meet with the president and tell you mm. that the person you greeted one lady that yeah. morning. That was me. When you were talking about how to reduce uh, the prices of maize flour, uh, that was me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is when uh, I now interacted with the Asians and uh, uh, it was good. It was good. Mm. I love the part. Yes. Okay. So I have three things. Yes. Let me take you back first to the uh, marriage part. Okay. For any woman or any man that is about to work in a blended family. Yes. And so for me, I'm first interested in what mm. really attracted you to your husband. Wow. Why did you say this? You guys have been together now for how long? Many years. Many years, mm. right? Yes. So what attracted you to him that mm. has remained even now? You are like, I'm glad I chose this man. Yeah. Okay. Lynn, I don't know whether I have told you that um, I gave my life to Christ yeah. when I was uh, in, in form, form 5 or Form 6. Yeah? Uh, and uh, before I made the decision to, to get saved, it was also a struggle. And it's like God has always been talking to me. So uh, this time round, God also talked to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the questions I still remember, I was asked, because when I was negotiating with God, I was telling him, now what will happen? There is this person I'm being attracted to. What will happen to him when I get saved? And then I was told, don't you want to get, to get married to a saved person? That was the answer. So to me, um, being a church person, being someone who is spiritually upright, that was a plus for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I knew I would, I would not just go into marriage to try. I yes. want my marriage to work. So I want somebody who who is serious with life, someone who is hard working. So, you know, I think he met all my parameters. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting. And, and then again, I felt like it was a call. I felt it was a call uh, to get into this arrangement because of the children. Within me, I felt... I felt I have a burden for these children because I was asking myself, now suppose somebody else, I suppose I refuse, somebody else comes to become their mother and, and then mistreats them. and mistreats them. That was very strong for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in school, there is a book, the, there is a literature book we, use, we used to read. I think the older was Maria Mamba. Mm -hmm. And Maria Mamba was advising women that. Uh, get married to somebody who loves you, not somebody that you think you really love. Because if you are the one who is loving and it's not loving you back, it means that marriage can collapse anytime. So you must make sure before you make a decision to get married, you must make sure that the man loves you even more than you love him. Because it means um, the, the, the probability of that marriage lasting uh, higher than when you love somebody more than he mm. loves you. <laughs> really? Yes. Hey. Yes. So, so, so the fact that uh, he showed that he really loves me, that fact counted for me. Mm. Yes. And uh, sure enough, because me, I knew I would be able to adjust, you know, I'd be able to move with him. Mm. Uh, our, our marriage 
last it. Last it. I'm, and I'm proud of it. He made you feel safe? Yes. Okay. And he has really empowered me along the way. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean to ask because uh -huh. yes. you are here, you are the deputy governor, right? <laughs> yes. How have you submitted to him as your husband and what do you think about submission? Mm -hmm. Yes, they say women, you must submit. Yes. How would you want to, you know, talk to us about that part and mm -hmm. how have you been as a woman that has helped your marriage last yes. this long? Uh, I must say, you so see, when I got married, he was already a pillar in the church. Uh, so when I got married, I became a, a member of the Mother's Union. Mm. Yeah, The first year, during the first year, I, I became a member of the Mother's Union. And uh, in Mother's Union, we always talk about families. We used to attend a lot of seminars. And there you talk about marriages, your relationship with your husband. So that really helped me. Um, although as women, we used to feel like uh, we are being taught all this, who is teaching the men. But uh, it, it was now on us to make the marriages work. Uh -huh. So that really, that really helped. So I was submit, submissive. Uh, we used to be told that the man is the head. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh -huh. we used to be told that we are the neck. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you cannot go. Yeah. Pass. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, the, the church and my spirituality. Uh -huh. And, and the fact that I feared God yes. and uh, I knew where to take my issues when, even when things are difficult, I think that really helped me. Mm. Being uh, being uh, strong spiritually, it okay. helped me. How Where do we draw the line between submissiveness and mm. slavery? Oh, well, you have to make a decision. Because uh, sometimes you can feel like you are you know, you, you, you are being used up or something. Uh, but one, you have to apply, one, humility. And one, you have to decide whether you want your marriage to work because that feeling will not last long. Uh, if you really work on your marriage, uh, the suffering comes only a little bit at the beginning, so several years, then you become stable. And but yeah, what suffering is this? <laughs> well, how much suffer? What suffering is endurable? And what suffering when you notice it, you say, nah, this I can't endure. Oh, well, Should the, we the endure? Or, what suffering is endurable? The, the, the thing is, are you taking it as suffering mm. or are you taking it as submission? It, it depends on how you are taking it mm -hmm. yourself. It doesn't, you don't have to take it as slavery in the first place. Mm. Because one, you know there is a man and there has to be a head of the family. You have to let him. Lead. You have to let him lead. And you also need to play your game well. You also need to have your own objectives because you don't have to forget yourself. Mm. You, you have to continue building yourself up. You know, like even when I decided to go back to school, yes. I'm, I'm still strengthening myself. Yeah, so it's not really slavery. Mm. And then uh, the way you act around the house, for example, there is one thing I, I, I promised myself that uh, I'll never live without a house help. You know, there are women who just decide that because I want to be perfect, I want to be cooking this good <laughs> food for my husband. I, I, I want to do it myself. Mm. But is it possible? When you do that, here is a man, here are children, and you are the only one who is working in that home. That that time you feel like you're being misused. You feel like you are a slave in the family. Oh. So ensure you have help. So if you can afford, yeah, if you get can, help. Just just work hard to be able to afford to have a house help. Yeah, so that you don't have that kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Like you are being used like up. Like you are being used up. But then again, there are people who will just use you up. What should you do in those instances? I think the only time one can decide to quit eh, is if your life is being threatened. Mm. Yeah? If your life is being threatened, you know, there are men who threaten women that uh, can even kill you or they are violent, you know? Yeah, if they are beating you up or if the quarrels are too much. Or they are emotionally yeah, abusing you. Yeah, they are abusing you emotionally. You, yeah, you don't, have, you don't have to stay there mm. if your life is uh, being threatened. Mm -hmm. But it is, if it is something bearable, yeah, you just uh, become resilient and mm -hmm. <laughs> try to improve the relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Work on the marriage. Kabisa. Okay, yeah. I love that. Number mm -hmm. two, I loved where you said you went back to school. 
you yes. went into these meetings and you identified these people are smart than yeah. me i'm yes. lacking in one two three mm -hmm. let me go and uh, get this you know get add on to this knowledge yes. why is that important in life that we have to keep you know growing ourselves we have to keep advancing we have to keep wanting better things for ourselves and when you're saying you are going back to school what's your husband's take on that um i must say that uh, it's always good to advance yourself academically whether you are employed or not employed uh, you know like in the government whether you're doing your own things or not doing your own things you need that knowledge like me when i went back to school i didn't i didn't know that uh, it would help me mm. anywhere i thought i was just going back to school yes. to improve my management <laughs> styles mm -hmm. at our work uh, i was just thinking about our businesses i was not thinking about any, anything else apart apart from the church because i was also a leader in the church mm -hmm. um but you see uh, after that uh, it came in very hard especially when i was doing the interviews for leadership if i didn't have it mm -hmm. uh, i wouldn't have gotten to this yeah yeah so i would encourage people to keep keep reading yeah uh what i tell people these days yeah is to stop saying that somebody who has cleared class eight has finished school because you'd go somewhere you ask them where is so and so the mother tells you oh he finished school what class class eight another one he finished school what class form four and uh, recently i i discovered that academic life ends at the phd Mm. And that is why they wear the round hat, kofia, the round one, because they have finished school. Mm. And that is when uh, the narrative, when they are being graduated, moves from being, uh, I give you power to read. It changes to, I give you power to do. Because now... PhD <laughs> means power to do. <laughs> <laughs> recently, <laughs> power to do. <laughs> recently attended a graduation ceremony for someone who was graduating yes. for PhD. Mm. And I asked him, I had gone there with two questions I wanted to ask. I, asked, I wanted to ask him, so when are you going to stop reading? And then the second question I was to ask him, so what did they tell you yeah. when you are graduating? Did they still tell you that I give you power to read? Then he told me, no, this time the narrative changed. They told me that I give you power to do. Yes. <laughs> so now I am telling parents, wherever I go, and I'm talking about the education, I tell them the academic life ends at the PhD level, mm -hmm. not in class eight, not form four, yes. or even masters. Mm. Yeah. So I encourage people to make uh, learning a continuous process in their lives. Mm. Yeah. As a leader, I must ask you this because it's a conversation that's going on online. Huh? Mm. We will go to school, we study, and then these things have nothing to do with us. You know, I had a guest uh, a couple of, uh, I think it's a few weeks back, and he was even saying how sciences should be taught in our native language right mm -hmm. and i believe the misconception is we are going to school and we are learning so 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 much mm -hmm. but then after we go and come out mm -hmm. it it appears again this is a misconception it's out there i'm not the one saying disclaimer mm -hmm. so our uh, people would be like we've learned a lot of things mitochondria x i don't know find x y chromosome all these things y chromosome and but when you come out our that education does not match what we find outside in our society and we say let's go to phd levels but mm -hmm. then again you come out mm -hmm. a lot of people chased the degrees and the masters and the phd mm -hmm. and they don't the the job market cannot accommodate Come. accommodate them yes. so we are spending so much time in mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. to get into the work environment but then they still there there is no balance so what would you want to say from a leader's perspective i would say yes and no mm -hmm. because when you go through education uh, it does not really mean that uh, you have to really apply what you are learning per se but you see you are developing your mind it's broadening your mind yes you're developing your mind and mm. it is your mind that you are going to apply so that is one aspect but i think at after some level you need to be focused yeah you need to be focused uh, on what you want to learn for example myself even before i attend 
a, a workshop or a seminar, I need to know what they are going to tell us in that seminar. If it is not something which is relevant to me, mm. I have no business attending. But if I, I discover that whatever they are going to teach us, I'm going to apply, then I am there. So, but then why, why can't our curriculum be curated in a way, what I'm learning in school to help me broaden my mind, I can come back here and use it, right? Like mm -hmm. right now we are learning, especially since you are a scientist, yes. we learn a lot of biology, physics, all these things, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody is extensively teaching us how to make candles, how to make cups, how to make these serviettes, how to do carpentry, how to paint. These are things we can do without having to knock on offices. Mm -hmm. So in the African context, why yes. can't they curate our curriculum in a way mm -hmm. the things we are learning in class we mm -hmm. can easily can be practical. Practical ukuinje. Because what you are the mamu anasoma, then mm -hmm. unato, akuna mtu andaka hizo makaratasi. We found mm -hmm. Y a long time ago. We found X a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like we are struggling even as young people to advance, advance, advance. But when mm -hmm. we come out, they are looking for people who can sell things online, people mm -hmm. who can make these outfits, these shoes, mm -hmm. these carpet, these lights, these tripods. Mm -hmm. Why is our curricula that way, rooted yeah, towards yeah, things that are not really and helping young people? Lynn, that is how our curriculum mm. is right now. But uh, I agree with you. We really need to do a lot of adjustments. Yeah. Like I admire the CBC. I don't know much I about that. it. But I, I think we are headed to the right direction mm -hmm. where we help young people to discover themselves early enough. Yes. And uh, actually, those who are able to discover themselves early enough, they are able to follow their line. Mm -hmm. I'll just illustrate with my own son. My last born son yeah. is, uh, is in Kenyatta University and he does fine art. Yes. He attended Alliance High School. But I really struggled with him in, in high school because him, he just wanted to do art, art, art. And uh, he was finding like doing geography, mathematics, whatever else. He was finding like these are just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I, and he used to tell me, I know I was born to do art. Yes. Imagine. And then it was now on me to just uh, try and convince him that you also need these other subjects mm. at least to get you a grade to take you to the next level yeah and then my daughter also i don't know where they got all this from <laughs> <laughs> my daughter when he was in form four yes. he really want she really wanted to be clear what she's going to study in the university so what she did she was even doing a survey in school with other girls at what do i look like I mean, what do I look like becoming? What do you think I am good at? What should I study in the university? You know, that process of discovering oneself is very, very important. Yes. And then I think we are lucky because at this time, most of the parents went through school and they can be able to support and guide their children. Mm -hmm. So uh, the process of discovering themselves, they need to be guided or you as a parent need to be very observant at uh, what what your child is good uh -huh, at uh -huh. so that you can help them to discover yes. themselves so that uh, when they need to be focused when they they need to go to the university or whatever they can choose the correct uh -huh. career for themselves because this is something where they have a talent in where they have a skill in then they you help them to make a decision to just develop mm. that which they are good at. I love that. Yeah. So you're encouraging your children to go out there and do what they feel in their mm. heart. Yes, Not yes. so mom can <laughs> say she's raising a scientist. Uh, uh, you are letting them do them, uh, do what they love. And that is where many parents are going wrong currently because they want their parents to study this yes, big their children. <laughs> yeah, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be an architect. I want you to be an engineer and uh, it, it needs to be it needs to be a negotiation ask your child what they want to learn and then support them because of what we are finding these days yes they will obey you they'll go and do uh -huh. that course and then when they graduate they bring you the certificate here is your your, your degree i'm going back to do yes. what i want to do yeah so as parents we really need to be conscious mm. and we need to support our children to 
to do what uh, what what they are good at i love that yeah huh? and you know when they <coughs> when they, they develop their talent it means they can they can turn that talent into a business idea actualize it good. and they don't need to be employed good. they just employ themselves uh -huh. and create jobs for others uh -huh. uh, i told you my son is a, is a fine artist um they are working and at the same time they are also learning yeah and they don't need to be employed by anybody because they are developing their talent. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Huh? Mm. Another question maybe, um, not to discuss politics, but why politics for you? Why politics mm -hmm. for me? I think, uh, for me, I think I'm at the right place. Yes. <laughs> because uh, of my spiritual background, you see, when you serve in the church, did I tell you I was a lady? I'm a lady right yes. now. Yes. When you serve in the church, it means you have that heart for people. Mm -hmm. You are used to serving. Mm -hmm. So when you go into government, uh, government we talk about service delivery. It is service to people. So it's like uh, the kind of service I was doing, but in another level. And I've never had any issue with the politics. In fact, you know the perception of our people. They usually say politics is dirty. Yeah. And they always discuss, wherever you go, they discuss, they say things are bad, there is corruption, uh, things are not moving on well, we don't love how things are being done. But myself, I remember, I always used to ask them, now you're here, you're complaining. You know you have the potential, you can do it better. You know you are not corrupt. You know you have the integrity that is needed. What are you doing about it? So you see, people just complain, but they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. They just want to continue singing the same song, mm -hmm. that politics is dirty. They don't want to get involved. Uh, for me, I have no issue. I need to be there, and we need to attract others to be there so that we can change the way things are done, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to deal with corruption yeah. in other ills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it hard, though, serving with integrity? Because you, you get sometimes, uh, Kenyans get so, I don't know, they, they are so <laughs> annoyed sometimes with how the politics are going, uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easier to be, it, it can be done, you can become a politician and still be serve with integrity? It is possible. It is possible to serve with integrity because uh, once you are a person of integrity, at what point are you going to change? See, you remain uh, with your integrity. Mm -hmm. You serve with your integrity. Yes. You relate with people with mm -hmm. integrity. Mm -hmm. You carry yourself with integrity. Yes. And you do things the way they are supposed to be done. You follow the, the law, you know. It is not difficult. And, and I think uh, people with integrity need to get on board hmm. if you are ever going to change anything in this country. Yes, yes, we have to. The positive people need to start they doing need, something. They, they, need, they need to come on board. Mm -hmm. What surprises me is how uh, we are ignorant, even about how uh, the government is run. People don't know anything about running the government. Mm. They don't know what happens in the government. Mm. But that is where life is, Lynn. That is where life is. Because the decisions that are made, the policies that are made, they are policies that affect the same people. So people need to be concerned mm -hmm. about how governments are run. Yeah. So people don't need to continue being ignorant. Mm. They need to learn. They need to learn. They it need is to very, get involved. It is very important so that even when you're not in leadership, you can also influence decisions. Yeah, uh, People also need to know there is something called public participation. A lot of people are not even aware that they are supposed to contribute into the decisions that are made by the government mm -hmm. through public participation. Uh, why? Because they don't even have an idea what happens in government. Yeah. So even when you're not a leader, you are supposed to influence decisions that are made by the government. Mm. Yeah, through pu public participation. Get involved. Get involved. Were you shocked though? I, I was just checking and you received so much love, you know, from the people in your county. Were you shocked that they trusted you to be their deputy governor or were you trusting, ah, this is, these people are going, the, I know what I'm doing here. Were you shocked by the love? Uh, at what point? When when you became the deputy governor, why you sh because it's not just you wake up and you become one, but then wow. people t 
tend to love you a lot in your county uh -huh. were you shocked by that love or um, were you expecting it were you like ah hii ni kawaida kwangu <laughs> kupendwa ni kawaida <laughs> well i know kupendwa is not kawaida uh -huh. uh, but uh, i usually say that you succeed at the planning stage yeah in I anything you that. do you succeed at the planning stage so the planning stage here means uh, the process of uh, nominating a running mate yes. the process of nominating the deputy governor yes. that is where you get it either right or wrong, or wrong. so i must say they, they had done their homework mm. well and they landed on the right person because if uh, I, i landed in the wrong place there would have been turbulence mm. in fact the moment that i was uh, revealed as the run, the, run, the, the running mate uh, the reaction there would have been a reaction but now the reaction was positive mm. because they had gotten it right yeah good mm. but you love your people I love my people. <laughs> yes, I love my people. I love uh, serving people. Mm. I have a great heart for people. How do you remain this humble? Oh, wow. Humility is a gift of God, Lynn. It is a gift of God. Let me give you a story. Yes. When I was uh, in A level and uh, I got saved, I became very prayerful. And somehow I started negotiating with God like in my prayers. Yeah. I remember that time I used to tell God, uh, you are the one who took my father when I was very young. You must change my life. You must give me good grades in form six. I must continue with my education. You must, you know, I used to negotiate with God and then God started now also relating with me. And uh, he used to talk to me. God started to talk to me actually in dreams. And I remember this one dream I dreamt when I was in form 6. And uh, I was being told that during Moses' time, yeah. he was the greatest man of his time. But at the same time, he was the most humble. Get that? Greatest man of his time, but, but most humble. Most humble. <laughs> And I think there is a verse that talks about yeah. how humble Moses was. And we know how great Moses was <laughs> during his time. So I also believed that. I believed that God will make me great, but I must be careful to be humble. So when I, I hear people telling me I'm humble, <laughs> I always ask them what is humility in your, in your perspective? Hmm. Because I want them to tell me what do they mean that you're humble. Hmm. Because even when I was revealed, People were wondering, actually people were shocked. Really. They were wondering how I was going to make it because they were saying, ah, she's humble. She's not so dramatic, <laughs> you know. Uh, they didn't know that I would make it. They were asking themselves, how is she going to manage the campaigns? How is she going to manage to go up the tracks and <laughs> 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 the campaigns? <laughs> But do you know, none mm. of those issues were a problem to me. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when I was in school, I was in games. We used to go for competitions. We used to cheer our teams. We used to be in tracks. We used to cheer. Yeah. When I was uh, in A level, I was a games captain. Mm -hmm. I would organize uh, competitions, inter-class competitions. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes it would become very hot. There is one time <laughs> people fought. Class threes fought with from six guys yeah it was that hot so it's like uh i'm i'm, I'm used to these things yeah it was all a problem to uh -huh. me yeah uh and uh, given my background also and having gone through what i had gone through it's like i'm very resilient i'm 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 not that sort uh -huh. but uh, people would think <laughs> i'm soft. resilient yes. i'm resilient i can survive anything in any situation i can adapt to any situation <laughs> I think my life has really prepared to be me to be strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Do you think all along God had a plan for you? Yes, I believe so. I believe so that God had a plan for you. In fact, what I know even from the Bible, when God creates you, he has a plan for you. He has a will for you. 
and he has a purpose for you. Mm-hmm. There is a purpose for which God creates you. Mm-hmm. And that's why I always encourage people uh, to live with God, to know the mind of God, to know why they were created, because it's God is the one who knows why he created you. So if you are not close to God, you may not discover your purpose. But if you are close to God, he will lead you to you know, mm-hmm. to pursue mm-hmm. his own purpose. So, mm-hmm. And I believe all along, uh, in any life, God prepares you for what it, he created you for. That uh, we even read in the Bible about Jesus. Do you know the whole Bible from the beginning up to the end? The focus is all about Jesus. Yeah. So it's like, that's a real process. That God creates you with this purpose. And uh, whatever you go through in life, whether good or bad, he's preparing you to be the person he mm. created. And I, I feel so even in my case, mm-hmm. that God has always been preparing mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Have you faced challenges where you felt like being drawn away from God? You know, sometimes people give up in the in the journey. Sometimes things just get tough and you even question God, are you really there? Like, are you there? Uh, Elaine, that is not one mistake I would like to make. I don't want to make the mistake of losing touch with my God. Mm-hmm. And you know, we go to work very early in the morning. I report to work at 7 every day. I wake up at 4 a.m. So the first hour before I even start preparing, I have to do my devotion. Because I don't want to lose touch with God. Yeah, I I don't want to lose touch with God. Right now, uh, it is even so interesting. Because, you you know, before the stories about the leaders of Israel were not making a big sense to me. But right now, I need to read about the leaders of Israel, the kings. Yeah, King David, King Isaiah, King, uh, I mean, uh, Hosea, King Ezekiel, mm. all those leaders. I need to read how did they lead, how, where did they go wrong, uh, how did they walk with God. So there is no way I'm going to allow myself to lose, to lose touch with God. Mm-hmm. No. So it's work. You have to put, you have to be intentional in the journey. Oh, oh yes, about it. Yeah, you have to be very intentional. Mm. Oh, yes. I love I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yes. You are not going to allow yourself ah, no, 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 to lose all. touch with God. Mm. Yeah. I love that honestly. Mm-hmm. Truthfully. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Let me talk about women in power because mm-hmm. I mean you are here and sometimes the stereotype is women in power ni vichwangumu. Sata home uambiliki, mzee awezi hata sema anything. Uh, you know who we are talking to. I'm the deputy governor. What, what did you say again? <laughs> what has k- kept you grounded? Yes, you're in power, but mm-hmm. you're also someone's wife, someone's mom, someone's friend. What has kept you grounded? Uh, I think and one, do you think women in power actually suffer from that? Probably, Our people just say it. Uh, probably some of them do suffer. Yeah. But I believe also it is the foundation you have laid for yourself. Because if your foundation is good, you need to know how to balance all all, all, all the aspects. Mm. Yeah, when you're a mother, you become a mother. Yes. When you're a wife, you, you are a wife. And uh, your husband, regardless of his rank, wherever, he's the head of that family. You have to allow him to play his part. Mm. Yeah. When you're in the church, you know, you know your position wherever you go. You need to be able to to be flexible. Yes. Yeah, and to play the different roles and be able to balance all of them. Yeah, and uh, you cannot ignore your husband. For example, I really respect my husband because one, I know uh, he's the one who has given me identity. You see, I'm even called by his name, Kirika. Kirika is his name. And then I believe he, he really he really empowered me even allowing me to become the ceo of a company yeah you see that is like allowing me uh, he empowered me a lot along the way giving me the freedom to exercise my you know and to use my brain mm-hmm. so there is no way whether i would become what or what i can i can disregard him mm-hmm. no he's the one who, who empowered me along the way mm-hmm. and i wanted courage uh, our men to encourage their women uh-huh. because women also have potential yeah if they can just be allowed uh, to to exercise uh, their their potential uh-huh. and to pursue their dreams 
uh, that that you would have a, a better society uh -huh. mm -hmm. someone would think that's too tradition uh, if whether he allows me or not i'll be going to become a ceo whether he allows me or not i'm going to become a governor whether he does this or this some people would think now because you're a woman you don't mm -hmm. need this permission to become who you need to become you know what do you say well you uh, you have to have a good relationship, mm -hmm. but uh, what really matters a lot is whether he trusts you. Know. Uh. Now, if, uh, if I am in agreement and allow you to become, do I trust you? Do I trust the way you'll behave? Do I trust the way you'll treat me? Eh? But if you have created that, that relationship in such a way that he can really trust you, yeah. then it's not a big issue. For example, I told you I have, um, I don't know whether I've told you, that I have traveled to so many countries, almost 10 countries before. And in all the countries, I think it's only one time that we traveled together. Mm. So when other people look at that, they would say, yeah, your husband really trusts you because he's allowing you to be away for a week, mm. for two weeks, for a month, and he has no issue. Yes. So trust. Trust really matters, mm. and he knows. Yeah, I'm, I am respect. going there, and uh, I'll be responsible myself. I cannot, you know. Mm -hmm. And respect. And respect. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, what would you say are three key things that has have helped you maneuver life? Um, three key things. Mm. Uh, I can say one is my spirituality. Yes. Yeah, always being able to talk to yourself and talk to God, uh, making decision, uh, in, uh, involving your mind to make decisions yes. uh, in a divine manner and being guided mm -hmm. by the word of God and by God himself, mm -hmm. that is very key for me. Mm -hmm. Two, education. You need the knowledge. Yeah, I've always learned what I need to learn. So education has helped me. Uh, for example, even when I lost my daughter, I, I mourned my daughter for two years, very intensively, every morning, mourning in a divine manner, uh, mourning prayerfully, and uh, whatever questions came to my mind, because it is very difficult why things like that can happen to you, especially when you are a believer. Uh, I, I mourned intensively, but in a divine manner. So whatever question came to my mind, I researched. Yeah. So when they tell us that uh, somebody goes to heaven, I want to know how do they live in heaven <laughs> now that she's in heaven. Yeah. So uh, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, researching, talking to yourself, reasoning with God being guided you know looking for information it's very key mm. and also uh, most important also the way you re you relate to people uh, who are you as a person when i come to you with an issue how how do you take me what kind of advice do you give me because the person always asks himself or herself can i trust her is she helpful yes is this somebody i can follow Yes. Is she respectable? Yes. So the, the way you relate to, with people also matters a lot mm -hmm. in life. In life. Mm -hmm. That one. Those are already three. No, mom, spirituality, mm -hmm. relating. Ed ed education. Education. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> because you need the uh, knowledge so yes. that uh, whatever you go in, whatever you're doing, mm. you have the content. Mm -hmm. You need the content and mm. you need to be able to reason. You need to engage your mind and that you can only get through education you know gaining knowledge oh, yes beautiful <laughs> yes. so all along you knew god had plans for you kabisa kabisa yes what? because mm -hmm. i knew right from the word go even though we found ourselves in the situation we were in uh when we were young i believed that that was not our life it's only that we were unlucky and our dad passed on the only thing that worried me a lot is if my my mom would also die yeah but uh, I knew that was not our life. We can still improve our lives. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is mom still here? Yes. She's still here. She's still, oh. she's still around. Uh -huh. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, she lives in Gilgil. Mm -hmm. So I always make a point of visiting her yeah. at least uh, once a month. Good. Yeah, Good. unless there is uh, an emergency or something. Mm. Uh, but uh, I've made it uh, a standard way of doing it. Yeah. Once a month, I must go visit her and, yeah. when I receive my salary. <laughs> Salary ni poa. Poa. Well, well, it's never enough. Uh, but uh, you see, una, una I decided tax. to make uh, to make herself uh, part of. You uh, know, she's she's a beneficiary of my salary. Uh, At least I go and shop for her uh, for the month. Uh, mama mm. una katwa tax. Of course, a lot. Uh, I know. Yes, yeah, yeah. House levy. House levy. Uh, House levy. <laughs> <laughs> Kila kitu. Kila kitu. <laughs> yeah. And think. it's okay. I have no problem with that. Eh? I have no problem with that. Really? Ah, because I have to lead by example. Uh -huh. If I'm not paying tax, how yeah. will I tell others to pay their revenues? I, I don't feel people have a problem with tax. They, they, have, don't a, have. they have a problem with where mm. are these taxes exactly. going. Because we can't pay tax exactly. when the roads are the same. We it's. can't pay tax when I go. We still need to make contributions for our friends to come mm -hmm. out of hospital, mm -hmm. the health care, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the systems. Like we, we could pay 90% tax. Yeah, happy. But Happily, the way we pay if to I, the churches. Yes, you know. Yes. But if I know, if I pay this tax, my kid education is good, hospital is good, roads are good, mm -hmm. security is good. Why complain? Yeah, and that is why mm. I'm talking about integrity. Yes. Just put the right people in leadership, mm. and everything else will be sorted. Everything else will yes. fall in place. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, mm. I love that. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> You've been incredible, but I don't want to end up this conversation without touching on anything that you think we've left out. Um. What do you want to touch on that you think we've not covered on the show? Uh, I think uh, generally we've uh, we've touched on almost everything yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> we talked about my family mm. life. We've talked about uh, business, mm. my spirituality, mm. leadership. Uh, we are, you have touched on so many things. Yes, I think sir. we are good. We are good. Eh? Mm. Now, because I know maybe your husband will be somewhere watching. So, I'm be a man in no matam matam kwa hi camera. Oh, my husband? Eh. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Eh, yes. That's not difficult for me. Ooh, go on, <laughs> mom. Hey, okay. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so to my husband, Mr. James Kirika Joroge. Uh, who lives with me in Thika, I must tell him that I love him and I really value him. Because one, uh, you have empowered me a lot uh, by allowing me to manage your businesses, mana uh, to manage your house, manage your family, manage your finances. In fact, I've always been a signatory to all his accounts and he trusts me that much. He allowed me to enjoy whatever I found him with. For example, one of the things I've enjoyed in that home are the, the, the cars. He has never uh, denied me access to anything. He has empowered me. He has allowed me to be a leader. I really value this man. Mm. And uh, I, I think he's one person people can learn from. Good. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. So what car are you driving, mom? Pal. What car? What's your dream car? Uh, right now I'm driving a government car. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, what? I'm being driven. I'm yeah. not even allowed to drive, to drive it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes, but yours, what's your dream car? Oh, well, just a big car. A big comfort, <laughs> comfortable car. <laughs> As long as, big, it's a, as, long as, it's a, as long as it's an SUV with a big engine, yeah, yeah, we are good to go. So you love big cars? Uh, no, not really, mm. but uh, when uh, when you can afford it, why not? Give yourself. Uh, life is for us to enjoy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. See, these are God's given are things God -given. to us. So but, that uh, but I'm also concerned about uplifting other people's lives. Yes. So that they can also enjoy their mm. life. Mm -hmm. yes. How are you doing that exactly? I'm doing that by encouraging people, mm -hmm. especially the young people, to discover themselves early now, mm -hmm. discover their talents, mm -hmm. and uh, grow their talents and use their talents. Good. Um, turn their talents into a business mm -hmm. idea, actualize that into a business. Mm -hmm. 
employ themselves yes. and create employment for others okay. because we cannot all find uh, jobs elsewhere to mm. be employed. We can employ ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is how I'm doing it. Got it. Yeah. Any message to your constituents, the people in your county? Uh, for the people of Kiambu County, I must tell you that I love you so much. I have a great heart for people, especially the vulnerable. And uh, I would like all of us to work together to uplift people who are, um, for one reason or another, lagging behind in their lives. The vulnerable, we uplift them, we support them in education, so that finally everyone can become uh, what God created them to be. Mm -hmm. That is my message. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, here to serve you. And you can trust me. Hmm. Thank you. You are so easy to talk to, ma. <laughs> oh, really? it, it's so effortless. You know, others is keen to find interview. Seriously? No, seriously. You need to repeat. No. <laughs> <laughs> Disclose that this is my first interview. For real? <laughs> <laughs> this is your first. Yeah, this uh, is my first. You did good. Oh, really? You Thank inspired you. us. Asante. You you are so easy. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, mm -hmm. not even because it's an interview. You are very easy to talk to. Wow. You are very straightforward. Right. You are very. You know your integrity is up there. Uh -huh. And I can see, like for me, my wish, even as I'm looking at you, talking to you, mm -hmm. my uh, what's going on in my mind, if, if we could find leaders like you, wow. we would be in a very safe space right now. Oh, thank People you. with integrity, leadership, straightforward, who want better things yes. for other people. Yes. I feel like if we had more like you, wow. honestly. Oh, yeah, just encourage people who know that they have potential mm. to get on board to get on board yeah. put yourself out there Pardon? let them put themselves oh, out yes. there oh yes mm. oh yes thank you mm. usalimiane usalimiane watu wa kiambu county yeah and i appreciate you giving me can i also me. say hi to the governor oh of course oh, oh, say, yeah. hi. Yeah. say hi I'll, I'll say Mwambi hi say hi kuje show <laughs> 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 say hi <Yeah. laughs> musalimie musalimie <laughs> Si uh, munapata na kofisi, yeah, bata every, salimi every, kwa kamera. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am, Your Excellency, Dr. Kivadu Wamatangi. I value you a lot. And I'll always be there to support you and to support your agenda. For the great people of Kiambu, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You love your governor. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. He's hardworking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kavisa. I love that. I love, th you know, sometimes when you have someone and then a deputy, mm -hmm. it's always a power, a power it's struggle. Uh, we need not struggle. Mm. Everyone has their own position. Yes. Yeah. Kila mtu afagie mm. kwa kitabu. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Yeah. And I appreciate you even for giving me your first interview. Thank you. I'm look, uh, uh, maybe it's something I can consider. I try to stay away from easy maneno mingi. Uh, but yeah. maybe it's something I can consider getting people to know their leaders better. Yes. Getting people to hear their leaders' personal stories. Yes. So getting leaders to answer some of the tough questions. For you, honestly, I don't have a question. I checked uh -huh. your tra your record oh, you speaks for itself. <laughs> I don't have a question, but I feel like also it's important for the audience to know their mm. leaders yes, better away from the politics the shouting the struggles yes. the chaos they need to be able to understand their leaders yes. from mm -hmm. a personal mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. and maybe that's a challenge uh -huh. i can brainstorm further with my team and uh -huh. see if this is something we are willing to take up all oh, right yes yeah, you, can, you can consider uh, inviting other deputy governors i think so yeah. I yeah. think so. We yeah. need to I hear. I can connect you to them if you need. Ah, thanks, mommy. So, you, <laughs> you are my plug. You are my plug. You can also invite my, actually my son, eh. to talk about talents. Who's the one who is doing in the School of Arts? Yes, yes. this one. Good. Come and encourage him. Recommend what a Kabisa yeah. mom. Yeah. Who, else? <laughs> who else would you like to see on the show? And, uh, no, I think for now, mm. Deputy Governor. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. your son. Yes. Good. <laughs> Consider it done. Mm -hmm. Me, you hook me up. Uh, <laughs> at least now I can floss and say I know her uh -huh. on a first name basis. Yes. But anyways, thank you for coming, ma'am. I wish you. you well. Go out and prosper yes. in everything you do. And thank you for being a leader. 
who holds high values wow. and for even inspiring us wow. for me my take home you don't want to put yourself in a position where you are compromising your relationship with god sure. so every day you have to be intentional you mm. have to be deliberate yes. on the kind of relationship yes. you want yes. with god okay. yeah salimia na nyumbani yeah. now salimia josephine oh, and yes. tell her i appreciate <laughs> the connection yes. and also to you guys at home i really hope you've learned something i want to see what your take home she's, she's, she's just lovely to interview <laughs> just feel like you're talking to your mom like she made this interview so easy <laughs> for me and i hope guys i asked all the right questions and i hope that you've learned something and of course as i said earlier i appreciate you i appreciate your feedback so every time you comment there i always you know i go through those comments and sometimes when all is said and done those comments are what keeps someone going so let me know on the comment section what your take home is and as i started earlier it is written for i know the plans i have for you for you for you for you for even before you were formed yes. in your mother's womb he knew the plan he has for you so don't let people go out there dictating the kind of person you should be you should be doing no 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 maintain focus maintain focus write your story it doesn't matter where you come from what he said you will be you will be i mean look at her from working on the tea plantation sleeping hang not having enough food not even having enough light just having those small moments in the fireplace with the siblings singing and making the best out of life even when it was just when your life ile kwa ngumu kwao she's here right now and she has maintained her values she's maintained her integrity what else is to learn from today's conversation so let me know on the comment section and of course my incredible team who get to work on the weekend sometimes because work is work and sometimes we don't have an option scholar edgar muga asante sana for always pulling up and of course our incredible editor sam kelvin and mary and not forgetting the management joshua valerie mtange and all incredible people people who make LNN what it is today we appreciate you na kama pia unataka ku support kazi yetu watu wa tap tap send waves sijui nini your mpesa number is right there feel free we appreciate i see the love and i'm smiling all the way to mpesa i'm like those are my people coming through so continue doing your thing and may we continue impacting our society one story at a time hopefully i get to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m and don't forget our girl gala is back so give her all the love all the love let her know she's appreciated tuona neni bye bye